We're talking about the opioid addiction, and I have two great guests here to, that we spent the last hour with learning so much from Susan Shaw with Drug Free Wilco. We're going to talk about the event in just a second that is coming up on Thursday, and also Dr. Stephen Lloyd. wants to be called Steve. We appreciate that. You, you are sharing your own personal journey through addiction and recovery, and that's what I want to focus on for the next few minutes. Yeah. Um, as we have entered this opioid epidemic, recovery centers have sprung up everywhere. Not all are created equal, and quite frankly, some are scams. Right. What is your message to families um, as they look for help? Well, if, if you're in Tennessee, then then a very reliable source for you would be the Tennessee Red Line. Mm -hmm. So you could just basically Google Tennessee Red Line. Uh, it's funded through the Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services. And people that answer the phone there will be able to give you good direction on where to get help, even if you don't have insurance or money. Uh, there are programs all around. Sometimes I'm an East Tennessee guy, right? So I think the rest of the state's biased against East Tennessee. <laughs> They're actually not. But we do have an abundance of resources in Middle Tennessee. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of reputable treatment centers that have been here for a long time they've done good work for a long time uh, but the most reliable source really in the state if you don't have any idea at all is the Tennessee red line uh, because there are people out there who who capitalize on this yep. and you know that uh, there's people in the recovery industry that uh, that are not in it for um, reputable reasons and I hate to see families spend money on that so I, I tell everybody, uh, addiction is a family disease, right? It's not just the, the, the person with the addiction. Right. It rips at the very core of the family. And the best thing that family members can do is, is offer direction and offer hope. Um, tough love and, and I'm going to kick you out and, and those type of things, while they may sound good or not very effective. Um, uh, at the same time, I'm not, you know, talking about just handing somebody money, but I'm talking about offering a path to recovery. Mm -hmm. and, I th and, and I always tell families that, that you need to get help yourself. Right? And, and sometimes they get mad at me. Right? Well, I'm not the problem. They're the problem. Right. But, but you know this. When you're living your life trying to behave in a way that's keeping somebody else from doing something you don't want them to, that will absolutely rip at your relationship with your significant other, your other kids. And so I always tell families to take very good care of themselves. And there's a lot of support here in Middle Tennessee uh, for people uh, who are struggling with addiction in their family, but it's not actually them. So those are all very easy to find. The Tennessee Red Line is the most reliable resource I can think of if you don't know anything at all. Perfect. Susan, tell folks again about what is happening on Thursday. Thursday night, um, Drug Free Wilco, along with Cumberland University, is hosting Dope Sick. It's a moderated panel discussion, and of course, you're going to be the moderator. Yeah. We're looking forward to that. Uh, the panel is great with Dr. Steve Lloyd, Beth Macy, the author of Dope Sick, David Rausch, who's the director of the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, and Taryn Sloss, who is the assistant commissioner for the Tennessee Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse. <laughs> it's a long, that's, that's, that's a long one, yeah. <laughs> We're going to spend an hour and a half talking about uh, the Hulu series, the book, but also the epidemic that we are all yes. living through in one way or another. Yes. What do you hope people will take from Thursday night? You already said it, hope, right? I mean, th that's yeah. it. You know, we sit here and I tell you about the dirty underbelly, mm -hmm. right? And, and that's people are interested in that. They connect to it. I want them to connect to this side of it. This is how I live now. I get to talk to you tonight. I'm going to go to my house here in a little while. Uh, that life is available for folks, right? There's this thing around addiction and anonymity, and I get that, yeah. right? And, and people have every right to, to you know, have their information protected. But I'll ask you this. How would you feel if you had a disease that you never saw anybody get better from? Oh, it, it, there's no hope. Hopeless. Yeah. And and I just couldn't get over that. And and I had a platform in the fact I have MD after my name. Mm -hmm. And 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 frankly, I got breaks other people don't get. And I, I realized that. And so. I like, I like it to be out there because I want people to see that you can get better. You don't have to stay in that. And I don't care if you're homeless right now. You don't have to stay there. Uh, there was a great article in the Tennessee uh, this past week on, on one of my friends, Thomas Gooch. And, and Gooch does you know street work here mm -hmm. in Nashville, and, and he came out of drug court himself. And Gooch is a great story. There is a lot of other great stories out there, and we share those stories because we want other people to see them and realize they can have them as well. And I'm a hopeful guy. I get fired up when people call me and, and ask me, hey, what can I do? And, and they're in the throes of chaos because I know what's possible. So we want people to take away hope. We want them to take away some tools that they can take back in, into their community. Yeah, Susan, what is your hope? You have worked on this for so long because you called me months and months ago and said, I had this idea and, and I think it's gonna be great and it's needed. What's your hope? 
just that a lot of people will attend and learn from this and it will, it will open their eyes and they, they will have a greater understanding and also to have more compassion for yeah. people that are called addicts or have any sort of a substance use problem because Compa you need compassion. Mm -hmm. um, these people, there, there is hope for them to recover. And when they recover, they also need more help getting jobs, finding housing, sometimes getting on their feet. So, so I hope that people will, will learn from it and develop some compassion and, and, you know, question things a little bit more. Yeah, and we're going to have such um, powerful storytellers, people who have lived it, who have yeah. worked through it, who are continuing to work through it um, in many different areas, from law enforcement to recovery centers, everything. So if you want to come join us, please do Thursday night doors open at six o'clock it's at the Capitol Theater in Lebanon I will be there all of us will be there to um, to walk yeah. people through this it's gonna be a really good night so please join us we do have more information at newschannel5.com and Susan what was the drug free Wilco address www.drugfreewilco.org <laughs> very good very good or just go to newschannel5.com we'll also have more tonight on the 10 o'clock news thank you both so much for sharing your story, yeah. for coming in, for doing the work that you're doing. We appreciate it. Thanks for having us. You bet. All right, when we come back, I'll tell you what's on tap for the rest of the week. Stay with us.